Greetings everyone, Brett here with Hammerhead Model Making with another exciting episode for you today. In this episode, I will be working on Academy's P51C in 172nd scale. For this kit, I also purchased the Edward Cockpit Photo Etch set. Now I should state that out of the box, the Academy Cockpit actually isn't quite, isn't too bad and the instrument panel is, is well detailed. However, there are quite a few details that are missing and I wanted to be able to have the cockpit open and I just wanted to add all that extra detail with the photo etch, um, which I might kind of regret later on because a lot of that detail was very small. Uh, the Academy kit out of the box is actually quite nice. It comes with three different markings, two for US Army Air Force and then one for the Chinese Air Force. And uh, so you have quite a lot of options. You do have some uh, ordnance options, drop tanks or bombs, uh, but no other options in terms of um, flaps or ailerons or anything like that. You also do have different options for the cockpit canopy. You have two options for the birdcage canopy, one open, one closed, and then you also have the Malcolm hood that was sometimes installed on P51Bs and Cs. So here I'm just filing away the um, molded in detail for the sidewalls of the cockpit in order to accept the photo etch from Edward. I'm just using a little jeweler's file that, that gets, it, gets it out pretty quickly. Um, for the most part, the, the actual assembly of the cockpit was really straightforward. The instructions are quite clear where everything needs to go. Uh, one note that I will point out if you do build this kit is if you the instructions would have you install the tail portions, like the, the back epinage, separately after the, the two fuselage halves been put together. Um, in my experience with other kits, that never works out well, and it always gives you gaps and, and misalignment in the wrong places. So I recommend putting the, the back half on one side of the fuselage to the front half, gluing those together, and then filling your seams top and bottom. I just find that much easier and gives you less of a headache down the road. Uh, the wings were pretty straightforward. You have tops and bottoms. Like I said, uh, you don't get any options for flaps or ailerons or anything. And the wheel well is molded all in one piece with the lower wings. Uh, it, it suffers from the, the Tamiya problem where it's boxed in incorrectly. And on this kit, it's actually really shallow. So it, it really looks kind of out, out of scale. Um, probably there's, there's two major points on this kit that I was disappointed with, the wheel wells being the first one. Um, so I got everything primed and we're painting everything with Ammo's um, interior green chromate color. Um, I've, I've really started liking this color for interior and I, I've used it probably on the last four or five models I've built uh, from the World War II era and I just really like it. So preparing the photo etch, once you cut it out of the photo etch fret, I'm using that jeweler's file again to kind of clean up all the nubs. Uh, you'll notice that I have a piece of ceramic tile there on my workbench. That's what I actually use to cut out my photo etch on. Um, it's best to use a hard surface like ceramic tile or a piece of glass when cutting out your photo etch so that you don't end up bending it. And then I'm just applying some super glue to the plastic part in order to attach it. And it, it goes on pretty much just like that, pretty simple. And uh, the instrument panel has two layers to it. Uh, so you'll see that here in a second. But so we do the first panel and then there's a, there's a second panel that goes on. That helps gives it a little bit of you know, depth and 3D look to it. And I was, I was really quite pleased especially for being in 72nd scale. I think it turned out quite nice. Uh, a little bit fiddly and it, it, you know, it, it tries your patience a little bit, but if you just take it slow, be careful how you apply your glue, you really shouldn't have any problems. The, the lower panel there goes on as well. Um, the P51 instrument panel is quite iconic and so it's, it's, uh, it's quite easy to recognize. And so this, this photo etch definitely does it justice. I highly recommend. I think, I think I ended up paying like $13 or something like that on Sprue Brothers for the photo etch. So definitely worth it um, for this kit. The rudder pedals, which I'm assembling here, were very, very finicky. 
and uh, this one definitely tried my patience because you have to do multiple folds to get it on there and then you have to glue it to the back of the instrument panel so i i it the one of the um rudder pedals flew off into oblivion at one point and through the grace of you know the holy modeling gods i was able to locate it on the carpet and uh kind of ended up not ruining my evening so sidewall details going on again the color photo etch is really nice the other thing i like about the zinc chrome green color that i use by mig is it matches pretty well with what edward uses on their color photo etch if if that's ever is important to you or not um, there were quite a few details going on to the side panels uh, as you can see i'm I, there's quite a few like electrical boxes and switches and stuff that you have to add in there and it really helps dress up that cockpit the other side of the cockpit has the throttle quadrant and a lot of the flight controls, and that was all made up with photo etch. So there was multiple, lots of bending and folding and gluing here and really, really happy with how it turned out. However, once you get this installed in, actually getting the cockpit into the fuselage is a very tight fit. And you have to be really careful that you don't break something or bend something or push something. So just be wary of that. Um, one of the things I did notice that was that really made me happy about this Academy kit is it's actually got a really nice texture on the f cockpit floor. Um, many of these Mustangs had a plywood floor or at least plywood components to it. And while the, the, the scale appearance of that texture is quite heavy, I think it really helps liven up this cockpit. And you'll see later on, I'll put a wash on that and it really kind of makes it pop and, um, Pleasantly surprised with that. So at this point, I'm just painting up the, the radios and the uh, the fuel tank there and um, trying, trying to be careful to paint around some of the actual um, ribbing detail that would be, you know, securing the radios. And uh, so that, because that would have stayed that interior green color. Uh, just giving a quick wash to the, to a lot of the components. This is using MIG's um, brown wash for green vehicles. Again, I, and I've said it on the other videos, it's one of my favorite washes. It's, it's really just a great all-purpose wash. Uh, so this wash that I'm putting on here is from Games Workshop. This is their um, Agrax Earthshade um, wash. And I use it for a lot of different stuff. And it just, to me, it helped give a, give a good richness to the wood grain on this floor. And right now what I'm doing is dry brushing some black onto the floor. So a lot of times with these Mustangs, they would have like a black non-slip coating applied over the, the plywood finish, but it would often rub off and wear down. So I'm kind of doing the, the reverse as opposed to like pulling off the black. I'm just applying it on. Um, I, you know, it, you really won't see much of it, but I like the look of it. If I was doing this in a, in a larger scale, I definitely would have chose to do a different method for that, but I think it worked. So here we're applying the photo seat seatbelts to the uh, seat. Again, this is very, very nice to have to help really dress up the look of the cockpit, especially with the, the canopy open. And I, I'm really pleased with how these turned out. Now, if you hear the odd sniffle here and there, I apologize. I am getting over a cold, but I've already delayed this video long enough, and I just wanted to be able to get it out to you. I know a lot of people will complain about the photo etch seatbelt saying, you know, they, they never really drape naturally. They look too stiff. And while I, I do agree to a certain point about, about those complaints and those concerns, I feel like the actual uh, look of having them there kind of outweighs that as opposed to nothing, you know, or some of the homemade belts like I've shown on in a previous video. Um, I, I think that's just a good improvement. And, and I've, and I've actually purchased, you can buy from Edward sets of just, you know, like us world war two seatbelts or British world war two seatbelts or whatever. So I've gotten a couple of those so that even if I'm never going to, I'm not going to be adding a lot of photo etch to a kit, I can at least add seatbelts. So at this point I can start getting everything all closed up in the fuselage. The, like I said before, the, the fit is really tight with all the photo etch in there, but Overall, the fit of the kit is quite nice. Um, there, there's just a few parts here around the canopy, or you know, the, the back of the spine there that I really had to apply some pressure to get it to, to fit right. And again, I think that's a lot to do with the actual photo etch, just 
really putting a lot of pressure inside the cockpit. For the most part, everything else pretty much fell together and didn't have too many troubles. So I mentioned earlier about the, the flaw with the wheel wells. The, the second major flaw of this kit is that it has zero radiator detail. So you, you saw that I just a minute, a second ago, I, clo I was gluing the radiator exit door shut. That's because you can actually see straight through. If you look through the radiator inlet at the bottom, at the, at the wings, you can see all the way to the back. And that just, that's kind of disappointing. So after sanding out all the, the uh, mold lines, the seam lines on top and bottom, I rescribed the missing panel lines. And here I'm actually drilling individual rivets. The, uh, the Mustang has some quite prominent fasteners on the top of the, the engine cowl there and it, the kit doesn't represent those. So I really wanted to add those in there and add that detail. And there were other places where I needed to add rivet, you know, restore rivet detail that I sanded away. Uh, it really didn't take me very long. It, you know, I wasn't actually, I, I was a little concerned at first it was gonna take a while, but it went pretty quickly. Um, here I have actually cut out the molded in gun barrels on the wings and I'm replacing with tiny little bits of, um, you know, plastic rod. Uh, once that sets, I will actually go through and drill those out to represent the gun barrels. I also added in, uh, you know, a small piece of plastic for the gun sight there. It was just molded in, in normal plastic and it just did not look good. So I just cut out a little square from, from clear plastic and glued that on there with some super glue and it really does the trick. So adding in the canopy here, uh, this I was concerned wouldn't fit well in, in the past. I've had kits that, that, that spe specifically for the P51, that front canopy never really sits well. This one actually fit perfectly. Same with those side windows. So here you can see I'm drilling out those, those gun barrels. Um, small improvement to the kit, but I think it goes a long ways because the, the molded in gun barrels were like little round nubs. It just didn't work out. So when it comes to masking the canopy for this, I wanted to try something a little bit different. And I'm using Liquid Mask by MIG. And my thinking was I could let it kind of flow in using capillary action to, to the actual you know, window frame lines. And it would give me a nice, good, uh, solid mask. And I wouldn't have to worry about cutting and, and all that stuff. And you know my intentions were good. But you'll so see the results later on. They just, they, it didn't quite work out. So I, I might try and refine, refine this, this uh, process, but it's not looking too good. I might just have to go back to sticking with tape. So giving everything a prime here, I'm using, I'm actually, for this, I'm using um, Tamiya's uh, gloss black. And then I'm hitting it with a layer of All Clads Aqua Gloss Clear. Um, I'm doing this obviously because I'm going to be doing a metal finish on this aircraft. And when you're doing a metal finish, you want to have the shiniest, blackest surface to start with. So right now I'm shooting it with Alclad's airframe aluminum, which is a really high chrome aluminum look and trying to just get a nice even coat. The nice thing about Alclad is it sprays on beautifully straight out of the bottle. You never have to thin it or do anything. It's great. So masked up and painting the anti-glare panel, I'm using MIG's olive drab base for this. And then I will hit it with a little bit of olive drab highlight, which is also another, another MIG paint. And uh, <clears throat> I know there is some, you'll read online that there's different schools of thought as to whether they were olive drab or they were painted black. I've seen colorized photos with both. However, they weren't necessarily true color photographs, just, you know, recolored photographs. So I never really know which one's the most accurate, especially for a specific given airplane. So I like the look of Olive Drab better. That's why I picked it. Um, I am using MIG Yellow here uh, for the tail. I had considered, so there's two black uh, diagonal lines that cross the tail as part of the aircraft's markings. And I had considered painting them, but I didn't want to have to deal with that masking. So I actually decided I was going to use the decals that come with the kit. And honestly, I'm kind of glad I did. They actually worked out really nice. So pulling off all the masking. And one of the things that I was, after I pulled off all the masking, I realized I didn't actually like the look of that airframe aluminum. So here I am repainting everything with Alclad's regular aluminum. And I'm really glad I'd made that repaint because it really 
change the overall look of the aircraft for the better, in my opinion. Um, it wasn't so chromey, you know, like you would see it like an air show. It, it felt much more, you know, like an actual in-service military aircraft. So here we're applying the, the decals, like I mentioned, these, these two diagonal decals. Once I got it on and got them into position, they actually worked out really well and only required just the minimal amount of touch-up once they were clear, good, and settled in. And um, it, I, I think it would have been a hassle to, to really mask that off and, and try and get it working. There was some, a few small issues with the decals. Some of them were quite brittle. You notice that that insignia there had, had ripped a little bit. Um, I noticed that across a few of the decals, but it was never to the extent that I had to, you know, go and look for some spare decals or whatever. I was able to use all the decals. I just had to be a little bit extra careful with them. One of the things that the Academy decals were actually really good about were reacting to the Solva set. I only needed about one or two coats for the most part on all the decals for them to really settle into those panel lines and really make those panel line details pop. So that always makes me happy when I when I don't have to use a lot of solid set on decals. Not like to make decals where I feel like I have to just keep applying and applying. So next up is a gloss coat and I'm using Vallejo's gloss coat here all over the aircraft. And this will seal in all the paintwork as well as all the decals in preparation for the weathering steps. I was gonna kinda, I wanted to do some medium um, weathering on this aircraft, not a ton, but still show a little bit of wear and tear. Um, before I do that, I went ahead and painted the wheel wells and the landing gear doors with the uh, MIG zinc, or, um, yeah, zinc chromate yellow. Um, I've seen many reference pictures of this being the color of the wheel wells of Mustangs. I have seen others where they're the interior green color, but fun fact, the reason why there's a metallic strip on the interior of the gear doors is so that as the gear is being raised, the wheels will actually rub against that metal part and stop them from spinning before they fully close into the wings. Here I've painted up the, uh, the exhaust, and now I'm using my very favorite ammo wash for green vehicles to wash all the panel lines. And this is great. So it is, it is an enamel wash, but I've never had it react negatively with any of the Vallejo varnishes or the um, Alclad varnishes. And once I let it dry for about 30 minutes, basically, basically until it's, you know, dry to the touch or the look, then you can, you can wipe it off with um, I'm just using a paper towel. You can use a cotton bud, Q-tip, uh, you know, soft, clean cloth, whatever you have. I generally try to wipe in the direction of the airflow. Doesn't always work out. But what I'll do is I'll use the the paper towel to kind of get the bulk of everything off, you know, the majority of this stuff off. And then I'll go in with a Q-tip or a cotton bud and get some of the harder to reach places or kind of start managing some of that wash a little bit more where I, you know, want to remove more off from a very specific location, like the bottom of the flaps here, what I'm doing. So again, this whole process for this airplane probably took less than an hour. So at this point I'm removing the, the, the masking fluid off the windows and it really ended up giving me a jagged, not very clean look. So I had to go in with a sharpened skewer, wooden, you know, wooden skewer to really clean up those edges. So like I said, I might give it another try on another kit later on, but I think for the most part, I'll stick to tape, even though it takes longer and risk slicing open your canopy. Getting the landing gear installed, very solid joint there. I didn't have any issues getting those installed and, and aligned. Um, they, they make it pretty obvious how they're supposed to go on. Spraying a little bit of uh, Vallejo black for the exhaust stains. And uh, I don't normally use the airbrush to do this. I usually like to do this with oils, but in this case, I, just, I really wanted to try my, my airbrushing skill at such a small scale. So I did the exhaust stains and the, the gun stains here for, for the ejection ports there. So I was happy with how it turned out. But now I am moving on to oils, and on a lot of Mustangs, so there's, a, there's this little port on the side of the, the engine cowl there, and you'll see a lot of reference video, videos of, of these huge oil streaks coming out of this little port. So I really wanted to represent that here. So basically, I, I applied a little bit of 
the oil paint, and it's a, it's a really dark brown oil paint, and then using a brush soaked in thinner, I can kind of work that paint around and, and get it the shape that I want to kind of show that, that oil coming out of there. I also added some oil streaks underneath the wheel well, and th so those, those few little dabs that I put on there on the bottom of the radiator, that's actually where the oil cooler sits, so there would be some leakage coming out of there. And again, I'm just using another brush soaked in thinner to really pull those streaks back and kind of give it that, that streaky look. Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, next up is applying some kind of general dirt and grime to the upper wings. So as the ground crew would be moving around or even the pilot, you know, up on top of those wings, whether they're fueling up the airplane or adding ammunition, th their in boots would inevitably pick up dust and dirt and grime and deposit on the wing. So I'm just dabbing the paint on there and using a large soft brush. I'm really just kind of stippling and, and working it into the, the upper surface of the wing. It's a very subtle thing, but I, I like how it looks and it just kind of helps break up the upper surfaces a lot. So at this point, it's just a matter of putting all the, the tiny little bit, bits and pieces on and uh, final assembly of the airplane. Um, I did end up sanding the bottom of the wheels, as you can see there, in order to give it that you know weight on, on the wheel look, and uh, I'm glad I did. It just helps give it a slightly more realistic look. So adding in the exhaust, they just drop in, which is nice. I know some kits will have you install them early on from the inside of the fuselage, and, I, and I, that always bugs me because it just makes it so much harder to paint. Um, at this point, I'm adding the antenna wire, so just drop a little dab of super glue on there and touch that wire to the super glue and then cut off the excess and you're good to go. I'm, I am using a, a product called Easy Line by MIG. It's that you know stretchable nylon so it's 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 easy to put on it's it's easy to get that nice taut look um, but also at the same time it it's really robust so if you bump it or accidentally hit, knock it with something it's not going to pop off. So last few, you know, last stage here is to add in the open canopy. These I did paint separately, and I actually masked these ones both inside and out so that I could paint the interior framing, uh, just give it that slightly more realistic look. And with that, we are done. So if you've made it this far into the video, I really appreciate it. And uh, if you're not subscribed, I really urge you to subscribe. Um, please, uh, please like the video if you enjoyed it. Um, if you didn't enjoy it, let me know and tell me what I can improve um, and leave a comment down below. I, I like to hear from you. You know, if you just have any general questions about model building, uh, about this kit specifically, or just, hey, you just want to shoot the breeze because you're bored. I'm, I'm more than happy to talk. So again, I appreciate you guys watching. I, I really do enjoy doing this and it's a lot of fun. And um, I will uh, leave you to some music for the remainder of the uh, shots of the completed model, and we'll see you on the next video.